Hi, I'm James, and this week I've taken the step with the launch of the new Intel Skylake X platform to finally go about replacing my main workstation. So for the past four years or so, I've been using a uh, Intel Xeon E5 2687W, which is a Sandy Bridge E based chip. Uh, that's a 8 core, 3.1 gigahertz processor, um, 150 watts of power uh, at peak draw, and a max turbo speed on a single core of about 3.8 gigahertz. Um, and basically, I've been having a few little reliability concerns with the machine of late. Um, and also gaming performance on this processor was never optimal and being a Xeon you are completely locked down in terms of tweaking it even if you run a base clock of 101 um, it will just refuse to post um, and say overclock failed reset settings uh, likewise you can't increase power limits or anything like that so I've taken the step with this new Intel platform to make the leap to that I had considered a Ryzen uh, 1800X build, but I have a few concerns with performance in a few of the applications that I use. Um, so I thought for the price difference, while it was quite appealing to save sort of two or three hundred pound and going down the AMD route, particularly the motherboard was a considerable price difference. Um, I decided to sort of stick with what I know and go with an Intel build on the new platform. So taking a look at the component choices. So here we have the uh, Intel Core X series processors, so the high-end chips on Intel's Arc uh, site. And basically coming from an eight core chip, I didn't really want to go down in core count. Some uh, For the majority of the work that I do, it wouldn't have actually been a major issue, but call it a point of pride that I like running an eight core chip. Um, and going to the Skylake X platform that actually has decreased in price quite significantly because of the pressure from AMD I assume. Um, so I have gone with the Core i7 7820X um, and because this has you know the high the same max turbo frequency as the 7900X uh, just with eight cores instead of ten and a slightly higher base frequency I'm hoping this will give me a really nice balance of it should give me good gaming performance um, particularly with Turbo 3.0 you actually push that turbo frequency up to 4.5 gigahertz in certain cases so it should give me gaming performance on a par with uh, the 7700K um, while still having multi-threaded performance which should outpace the Ryzen chips um, when I'm doing things like video editing, Lightroom work, things like that. Um, in terms of motherboards I've gone with the ASUS TUF X299 Mark II. It's basically the cheapest of the launch boards. I traditionally go with ASUS boards for my systems, um, just what I normally do. Um, I prefer board manufacturer and really all the boards that are launching are very feature rich and um, so on here you still have you know decent overclocking support you've got uh, your USB 3.1 gen 2 ports a plethora of USB 3 ports and we have as we can see on here dual M2 slots um, both of which support NVMe SSDs and really I couldn't see a point unless I was really interested in getting something for looks that in going with one of the more expensive boards in the range there just didn't seem much in the way of additional features I'm also hoping you know with the five-year warranty um, and the focus of the TUF boards on sort of stability that hopefully that will mean of the introductory boards this will be one of the um, the more reliable and particularly since I'm replacing my existing system because of some reliability concerns. Um, this is going to be going into the Corsair Carbide 300R windowed case. I wasn't actually going to go windowed because it's a workhorse system, it lives under a desk, I'm really not too worried about the aesthetics. Um, it just so happened I was going to go with the 300R to match my cooler um, and when I was ordering it Amazon had a great price on the window version of this case um, so I rather than it was around half what is quoted on this page um, and this because I'm going to be running um, four hard drives an optical drive uh, NVMe SSD it 
it really matched up with what I needed so it's going to fit my graphics cards it has the space in the top here for radiators plenty of room for power supply and everything else it was a sensible choice at a good price and that then cooling wise we're going with the Corsair Hydro H115i uh, so a fairly large uh, pre-built water cooler because this is quite a power hungry chip and I may well um, open up those power limits a bit higher just to allow for it to turbo more of the time. It seemed like a sensible choice to fit a water cooler rather than a air cooler just to get that sort of radiator size. Um, I'm not normally a fan of sort of the 120mm radiators but having that double radiator there does actually give you a bit more cooling capacity. Um, in terms of the other components, I've already got some starting to arrive. The cooler and case and some of the other bits are coming with the chip and motherboard when they uh, ship next week because it was a pre-order. But I do already have my Samsung 960 Evo M2 SSD and two packs of Corsair uh, Vengeance LPX DDR4 2666 memory. Uh, 2666 being the fastest supported by this particular um, processor. The Skylake X range is a bit weird in that they segment different memory speeds. So some of the lower core count chips officially max out at 2400. Um, I want to run the chip more or less in spec, so I'm not interested in sort of 3 gigahertz plus memory. Um, so I've gone with that. And because it's a quad channel memory architecture for this processor, um, I went straight to 32 gigs of memory because I didn't want to go for 4 gig DIMMs for 16 and then go, oh, actually, I want to go up to 32 and be doubling it up. I went straight in there um, with that. So I'll be building this system up next week once the processor and motherboard ship so be sure to subscribe if you want to see sort of first looks at the motherboard and the overall build and let me know if there's anything you'd like to know about the platform once i've got it up and running any questions on sort of why i've chosen the products as well uh, for this build feel free to ask in the comments and i'll be sure to put links to all the components in the description below thanks for watching